Well, hola a todo. Hello, everybody. Bienvenidos. Uh, the first live stream here where we're going to do some live streaming Spanish lessons. Now, um, this is a little bit of a work in process here, everybody. So it's the first time that I'm going to be doing more of an interactive live stream, um, kind of like teaching some very basic fundamentals of la lengua uh, de español. And uh, so you can uh, chat um, on the chat, uh, but because I'm also trying to go through um, the information that I want to share with all of you today, it may be a little bit more difficult for me to, to respond. Um, what I'm thinking of doing in the future, and my son is going to help me with this, is he would be uh, on live as well, and he could uh, go through some of the questions that you, all of you are making on the chat. He could then put them on the screen for me, and I could look to them and, and answer them. But I think just for this lesson, if you could just bear with me, and uh, we're just going to get through it, and it'll give me uh, a feeling of what I what I was able to do well today and what I was able, what I could be able to do a little bit better next time. Um, questions or comments or answers, you, you can definitely put stuff in the chat, but what I want each and every one of you to do is copy and paste anything that's important from this chat, the live chat, into the actual comments of the video because what happens if I go back uh, after this video is completed and I want to answer a question or make a comment to one of your questions, it's uh, it's casi imposible, it is impossible for me to do because um, I can't respond to the live chat because it's over. So anything that's important that you want a follow-up on uh, for me from these lessons or any of the live streams actually, please make sure that you actually put uh, uh, in the description or the the actual um, comments, comentarios uh, of the actual YouTube video. Okay, so uh, bienvenidos. And uh, that's an actually interesting word because it is very similar when you translate it uh, directly into uh, Inglés, which is English. Bien is well. So you've Obviously, you heard this if you know basic Spanish, if you've been coming to Mexico, someone says to you, como estas? And you say, bien, y tú? Like, they say, como estas? Which is, how are you? And you respond, muy bien, or bien, y tú? I am very well, or I'm well, and you. So, bien is well, and then venidos is, comes from the, the verb venir, okay, and it's conjugated to venidos, and really, Directly translated, it works out. It is welcome, bienvenidos. So you hear us say that on every one of our ven videos that Paul and I do. We're bienvenidos a nuestro canal, and canal is channel. And we're going to kind of kick things off today a little bit around how much vocabulary or vocabulario that you already have. And maybe someone can text, if you could think about how many words are there in the Spanish language that are already similar to words in the vocabulario inglés or the English vocabulario. Anyone have any thoughts what that number would be? Um, put it in the, the chat below. Anyone want to take a, a guess before I give the uh, the answer? And there's uh, there's no bad guesses. There's no... You can make a mistake, it doesn't matter because I'm going to give you the right answer. You may be surprised, it could be high, it could be low. Anyone? All right, well, it's uh, it's over 2,000. <laughs> KRL, 10,000. Well, you're a little high on that one, but still, there's 2,000, dos mil palabras, 2,000 words already in your mente, your mind, that are very close or very similar to Inglés y Español. So you already have... 2,000 words. Oh, we got William Towden in here. Bro, how's it going? Um, good to see you. And uh, where are you now? You're in Texas, which is Texas. Um, so yeah, so you got 2,000 words. And it's uh, it's pretty crazy, right, really, if you think about it. So the way I thought I'd kick things off today would be to focus on 
the words that you already recognize because those words are pretty well almost spelled, they're either spelled exactly like English or close enough that you pretty well know what they're talking about. So I've pulled up um, a newspaper from uh, Puerto Vallarta and I thought that we would go through it. And, and this is uh, on page four and what is it? In every newspaper we have usually an op-ed or an opinion piece, but look at the word, opinion. Okay, what, is the, what does that translate to? It translates to opinion. So we say in English, opinion, but in Espanol, you can see where they have the accent on the O. So whenever you see an accent, you have to stress that part of the word. So in this newspaper, this is Pagina Cuatro. And what do you think Pagina is? It would be page, right? So even though it's a little bit different, Pagina kind of starts the same way as English. They're very similar. So it's a way for you to kind of think about that word. So we are looking at, uh, uh, I think it's Jorge Berry, and he is doing his opinion. So I'm going to blow up. So what I like to do, and uh, I'm going to see if I can kind of make this a little bit bigger for people. Um, but what I'll do is when I'm reading Spanish, even though I consider myself pretty fluent, I'll scan through just like you do in English. Okay. Like, do you read word for word or when you read English, are you basically kind of scanning and seeing the words that resonate with you and you're getting the feel for what this article or what this piece is about? It's the same when you're reading a foreign language. You just have to start picking out the words that are the same. So here we could say el, well, we all know what that is, is da, okay? Sindicalismo, which is a syndicate, es esencial. So the syndicate is essential, right? So you could kind of like go here and almost make out what is going on there. And then we go down through here, laborales, labor. You might not know exactly what that word is, you know, we could have uh, labor, laborers. So la laborales are actual laborers, but you can know by looking at that word that it comes from the word labor in English. Uh, régimen, a regime, democrático, democratic. Los trabajadores, well, you may not know one that one. That's not close to English, but that are workers. Let's go to the next one, protección, protection, okay? Objeto is, could be object, but could also be to object. Abusos, abuse. And patrones, you can think about this, right? Like this is a, a word that might come out in English, but a patron is someone who is basically the boss. A patrone can also be someone who is a sponsor. So if I'm looking for a sponsor for my business, I am looking for... Uh, a patron to sponsor my business or sponsor my evento, which would be my event. And we do that a lot with our cycling events. So you can see just in this one little paragraph here, we've already found, you know, several words that you know exactly what they mean. So part of um, the method I use is the Michelle Thomas method. And I've used Michelle Thomas to learn Italian, Italiano. I've learned Frances uh, using the Michelle Thomas language. I started to learn Dutch at one time, but kind of gave that one up because uh, I started a little bit late. And then when we uh, ended up in Belgium, um, everyone was speaking English and they just got frustrated with my Dutch. Uh, so I just kind of let it go. But I would love to go back uh, and spend some time to read relearn or try to learn the Dutch language, but I would use the Michelle Thomas method. And one of the things Michelle Thomas likes to say is, and I will reiterate this with all of you, is you have to forget about thinking, um, or sorry, you have to forget about remembering. So this is actually, it's the polar opposite or opuesto. You have to think about thinking. So think about thinking, okay? And forget about remembering. So these classes are not about remembering any words 
or remembering the lezione, eh, the lesson. It is all about thinking, right? So using your mind, using your brain to think through your situation, what you're trying to say or decir, because the more you start programming yourself that way, the more easy or facile it will be to start using your vocabulario inglés y transformarlo, transform it into español, which is Spanish. So I'm putting this um, one up here. You can see my mouse. And if everyone, uh, you can either just uh, mark a, a note in the video as to what timestamp this is. And I want everyone to go through this paragraph. I'm going to just make it a little bit bigger. And I'll scroll through it slowly. And then after this video, I want you to reread it, OK? But I don't want you to try to remember. I don't want you to go to Google. So no using Google, no trying to remember anything. Just try to think about what we're talking about today. And I want you to pull out at least five words in this little section here that resonate with you, meaning you can translate them immediately, immediately, because you understand exactly what they mean. OK? So I'm going to scroll through it. And you can leave this to the end of this video, but I want everyone to go back to this and then read this and then pull out five words that resonate with you where you know what it means in English. OK? So I should have scrolled down to the end of that. I'm kind of on this page right now, so I don't see what's going on in the live, but I'm gonna come back here and uh, go to page two. So there was the opinion piece on the Periodico Vallarta. And what I'm gonna do is I will share a link. I'll upload this, I'll actually upload this PDF uh, in movingtomexi.co. And then I'll upload a link into this video. So after this video, you can actually download this PDF and you can you can look at it. And sorry, I am seeing people chatting on the chat, but I, it's going to be too hard for me to chat back with you. But if I see something, I will say uh, something back to you. So let's go to page two. And again, let's look at this, everybody. So depresión tropical dejará lluvias en Vallarta y Bahía. Okay, so we know for sure we can pick up two words immediately, right? A tropical depression. So we were talking about this a couple days ago, or the, the news was talking about this a couple days ago because there was a, a big storm off the coast. So we had a tropical depression, which was leaving, and that's from the verb dejar, and that's okay. If you don't know a word, what I suggest is highlight it, right? So you you can translate all the words you know, and you highlight the words that you don't, and then you go to the Google, right? So don't go to the Google uh, translator for anything that you think you can figure out on your own that you can think about, right? So this basically says is tropical depressions basically left uh, rains in Vallarta and the Bay. Okay, so Vallarta, we know that is short for Puerto Vallarta. N is in, okay, in, N, Vallarta, and the bay. Bahia is bay. But let's go through, like, let's go through again um, the first paragraph here, and I'm going to just make it a little bit bigger. So, la formación de una zona de baja presión que se convirtió en depresión tropico frente a la costa del estado de Jalisco. I'm just going to stop it there, right? So, la formación, the formation, right? De una zona. We know what una means because, I mean, if you even have a basic understanding of Spanish, una cerveza, a beer, right? So, the formation of a zona, a zone, de baja. So, here's a word you might not know, right? So, you would, you would highlight that. Baja means low, okay, or below. Presión is pressure, right? The same thing in English. But you might just read this and say, I kind of that kind of makes sense. The formation of a, a like a lower pressure, right? Que se convirtió 
convertir is to convert, the converted into a in depression tropical. So it converted into a tropical depression. And you can see in Spanish, in English, we would say tropical depression. In Espanol, we say depression trop tropical, okay? Frente, anyone have any guess what frente means? It is not exactly uh, perfect to the, the English word, but it is almost close enough. And after seeing it, you should be able to think about it or pensar en esto en el futuro. Anyone can think of what frente means? So frente is equals front, okay? So frente equals front, and it's a word that you will hear uh, quite often. En frente, en front. Um, uh, the impresión frente, uh, a, a pression, a, like basically a tropical pression that is the pression that's in like a front. We, we hear that, that word in English on the news uh, quite often. So again, I'm gonna kind of let you guys go through this, but here again for uh, the homework, so to speak, not necessarily the homework, but just extra work you can do on your own, I want you to read the next two paragraphs, okay? Starting at El Servicio Meteorológico. And I have trouble with those ones, man. Anything that is so close to English with the accent, it is sometimes a tough one. Uh, for me to pronounce, Nacional Informó. So read all the way down there and all the way down to this end where it says Puerto Vallarta y Bahía de Banderas. Try to find seven words that you immediately understand what the translation is going to be in English just based on the word you're seeing in Espanol, like trayectoria or trayectoria. Trayectoria, sorry, not. See, if it was trayectoria, the accent would be on the A, it's trayectoria. But what does that sound like in English? Okay, so you can do this at the end, after the end of the video, and, um, and you can put that in the comments so that you have to come up with seven words, okay? Uh, and again, I will leave. Um, might take me 10 or 15 minutes after this uh, live stream, but I will put a link in the description with a link to this uh, newspaper article so that you can actually pull it in case it's too hard to read on my share screen. And I just wanna actually, I guess I should ask, everyone can uh, see my, my share screen, correct? If you could just say, if someone, first person can just type yes or no, I guess I should have asked that in in, uh, in the beginning. So Travel Eats um, asks, what is the correct, correct pronunciation, pronunciation of taco in Mexico? Americans say taco, but when I hear it from Mexicans, it sounds more like taco. Well, I guess it depends where you're, where you're from in the States or Canada. If you say taco, it's literally taco, un taco, un taco, would be the way you pronounce it. But if you say taco or taco or taco, <laughs> however way you say it, man, everyone's gonna know you want a taco. So while I'm um, gonna go to the next uh, share screen here, does anyone have another question like that? And I can, uh, I can, I can answer it. Maybe we can scoot through here and see if there was anything, anything else. All right. Well, if you have anything, you can uh, put it up there uh, just like Travel Eats did, and I will uh, scroll through uh, the chat and I can uh, answer your question. All right. So here we are. Se, ru se recupera el Parque Nacional Islas Marietas. Okay. So again, when you're reading a newspaper, go for the low hanging fruit. Usually when you see a, um, the title or uh, the headline, it's mostly gonna be words that are very similar in English, okay? So literally this is saying that 
the island of the Marietas, which is a national park, un parque nacional, has recuperated. It is recuperating from, in the past, it was uh, abused um, by people who would camp and party on the island, burn fires. Actually, there was a pretty bad fire there at one time. Um, so they made it a national park and they made it protected and um, it has since recuperated. So when you're going through a newspaper like this, you can start looking at the headlines, right? To get an idea, is that an article you're interested in reading? So start there. And then again, you go, you know, to uh, the other parts of it and you could see, you know, the, the, again, the little mini headlines within the paragraphs, right? Look at this one, diversidad de especies. Okay, what do you think that means? Especies. What does that sound like in, if I took off that E, what does that look like in Inglés? Species, right? Diversidad, what does that sound like in English? The diversity, right? And um, again, that's kind of the best way to start. Like don't overwhelm yourself by trying to translate this entire uh, page. Go for the low hanging fruit, start training your mind to think about the words that you are actually seeing in um, whether that's online or whether it's in a paper like this one. Okay, so going back to the chat, the chat, anyone have any other questions, any other things you want to ask me about the lengua uh, español? Here's another uh, question. So they did a study uh, years, many, many years ago about how many words were used on a daily basis in the English language. Meaning if you were to go into an English newspaper and you were to go through all the articles and collect all the words, how many different words would be in a Sunday edition of my most hated newspaper, the New York Times? Does anyone have uh, any guesses what that number would be? You can uh, comment in the live chat. Anyone, just throw me a guess. Someone just throw a random guess. And then once I see the random guess, I will uh, I will give an answer. And in the meantime, I will come to this question here. What is the level of Spanish uh, fluency needed to enjoy living in Mexico? You know, it really depends on where you are living, viviendo in Mexico, where you're living, viviendo in Mexico. Um, if you're living in an area like Puerto Vallarta, you can pretty well get by speaking uh, almost no Spanish, okay? There's enough people here, especially in the area de turismo, turismo, which is tourism, are gonna have a basic understanding of English that they're going to be able to get by. And your level of Spanish at this point is probably less than their level of English. So then what happens is you as a traveler or someone who wants to habla español, you get frustrated, right? You have frustración and you start speaking English and they just speak English. So what I encourage everyone to do is continue to take our online class, uh, which I'm gonna start doing weekly. You can also go back to the videos. I had a original set of videos I did with my daughter, Adelaide, which is kind of like taking us through these same type of steps, but I'm going to switch it up a bit here where, you know, maybe I think next week we're going to talk about the weather. And then the week after that, we're going to talk about traveling. Uh, so we're always going to kind of have a topic. Today we're talking about, you know, the newspapers. So, um, yeah, you can pretty well get by in Vallarta with no Spanish whatsoever. But if you were to go into the country, forget about it. Forget about it. You need to learn a little Espanol because most people out there are not going to speak a, leak, uh, a lick of English. And it's going to definitely do you well if you especially want to travel to kind of like off the beaten track places in Mexico. You need to aprender un poquito más, un poquito más, a little more Espanol. All right, let's see what people said. We had uh, one person say 1,200, KRL said 50, and it actually is between 500 and 1,500. Kind of the average is around 750. On any given day, on any given newspaper, you're gonna see uh, 500 to 1,500 words and no more than that, okay? And that's 
And then generally what we use individually on an individual basis, just talking and sending chats to one another is around five to 600. So if you can think about that, right? All you really have to do is learn, okay? And be able to think well in 500 words, okay? And there are various conjugations. So you could be using verbs and yet, you know, there's a, a like a verb is said one way, like I could say, um, to, uh, to teach or to drive in English is to drive. To drive in Espanol is manejar. I drive in Espanol is manejo. To dr you drive is manejas. But so that's still one word. So you, you, but you, but once you get the verb down manejar and you learn the conjugations, well, that's gonna allow you to, to think through the language and um, and uh, the proceso, the process that is in your mente, your your mind. Okay, so let's go back to this article and and again, you can. Uh, I'll let everyone kind of like take this one and uh, read it on their own. You don't have to comment on this one, but again, this is kind of a good one because it's local news. It's talking about the weather, operación con normalidad el fin de semana. Okay, el fin de semana is the weekend. Uh, operation with norm like basically with normal normalization okay uh and again pretty well almost everything in here you can uh translate or half of it you can translate and then once you understand or learn these words right and you can think what semana means week and fin means end and el you already know means the once you get el fin de semana like that's just an easy one to think about what do we always look forward to? El fin de semana. I'm looking forward to el fin de semana. So you think about that, okay? Start thinking about that when you start getting to Thursday or Friday. Ah, I'm looking forward to el fin de semana. And the more you start thinking about that in Espanol, once you see fin, once you see semana, you're always going to remember that that is end and that is week. Right? And fin de semana is weekend. Normalidad, normal, the normalization or normal. Normal is normal in Espanol. Normalidad is normally or normalization. Okay? So again, you can kind of go through these and, um, and, uh, and start reading the low hanging fruit, the headlines, and, and, uh, and start translating. As, haciendo un traducción. Traducción is a translation, okay? There are some words, and we're going to get to this in another episode, like your ION words, like anything that's ION in English, like foundation, okay? It's actually fundación in español, okay? But anything ION, and you can think about that, and that's actually another one. Why don't each of you, um, at the end of this lección, Put in the comments below five English words, okay, that end in I-O-N. And But before you put them in, you can then go into the Google to look, and you'll be surprised. They're all the same. They're the same in English and the same in Espanol. The only difference is the, pronun the pronunciación, okay? Pronunciation is an I-O-N word. Pronunciación. So I'm putting the, 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 the stress on the the last part of that, I-O-N. So each of you can find or think of five, think again of five palabras in English that end, terminar, there's another word for you, terminar is end, okay? To terminate, terminar in I-O-N. So you can put that in the comments, okay? Not the live chat, put in the comments, five English words that end in I-O-N and what they mean in English, pretty well they're gonna be the same, but just like I said, foundation is gonna be slightly different, fundacion, okay? But it means foundation. So put the, the English and then put the Spanish. All right, so um, I'm gonna, again, send, uh, oh, let's do one more, what the heck? Oh yeah, I wanted to do this one anyways because here's a word for you to learn in Spanish. It's very important which is important, especialmente, especially aquí en Puerto Vallarta, durante la temporada, and temporada is 
the season, but it comes from the word tiempo, okay, which means the time. So it's the time of the year. De las lluvias, okay, we have all these rains. We get muchos baches. And a bache is a pothole, okay? So we have muchos baches in todos partes, in all parts of La Bahia, the Bay Area. So here a guy, and I'll let you read this on your own, but he, he did a little ride at the Punta de Mira, and it was, uh, his article is kind of funny, but, but you can read this in deplorable, okay? What do you think that means in English? Deplorable, estado, state, okay? Estado could be a state in the United States, los Estados Unidos, it could be a state here in Mexico, el estado de Nayarit, where I live, or el estado de Jalisco, where Puerto Vallarta is, la carretera, which is the highway, a punta de vista. So he said, it's basically like the, the freaking potholes is a complete riesgo, which is a risk, para los automovilistas, the, the drivers, and it's deplorable state, the, the, the highway to Punta de Mira, okay? So I'll let you guys read that. I'll, um, yeah, give me like 10, 15 minutes after this to uh, post a link in the description so you can download this article. And again, go through the low-hanging fruit first, okay? Read the, the headlines, and then you can kind of like read the... Um, you know, sometimes when you see these little things here, those are great ones too because it's 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 a summary of the entire article. So go through that first, and then you go through the entire opinion, looking at the head, the mini headlines of each paragraph, and then go through each paragraph and pick out the words that you understand. Right? Like uh, I just saw one here. Oh, uh, let's look at it before we leave. One more. Okay, so. Someone's going to answer this on the text. Fraude. What does fraude mean? Anyone have any idea what fraude means? Just type your message there. Uh, first one gets a cheers from me, a salud. <laughs> Come on, someone's going to, someone, and no Googling, what does fraude mean? Anyone? Okay, I can't, I can't end this uh, live, live stream without someone guessing that one. Um, it's it's almost identical to an English word, fraude. Come on, someone's got to get it. Someone's got to type in that answer. Uh, no, it is almost exactly English, okay? Take off the E, what do you got? What's that English word? Exactly. Way to go, Juan James. You got it. It is fraud. Um, so fraude is uh, fraud. So there are so many words. As I said, there's over 2,000 words that you already pretty well can identify. You just need to think about it and notice it. Like, so how easy is it to not see that that means fraud just because it's spelled weird, right? But once you kind of understand how the Spanish language is actually connected so closely to the English language. And the reason being, and I'll get this in another, another episode, is pretty well the English language, as all of us know it today, primarily comes from French, okay? There's very little of the original English language that is left in our vocabulario. It is predominantly French. And that has to do, that goes back years and years of French basically, uh, uh, invading parts of English territories uh, across the pond and English people losing their language and adopting more of the French, but they just couldn't pronounce it, okay? They didn't know the pronunciation, okay? Pronunciation. So they'd say uh, pronunciation. <laughs> so they just pronounce it different. But pronunciation is French for pronunciation. Pronunciation is not an English uh, word. A matter of fact, no ION words for the most part uh, are have English roots. They're all from French and French, Italian, Spanish, all originate from um, the Romance languages uh, of Latin. And that's what we have today. All right, everybody, uh, muchas gracias, many thanks, muchas, we all know that one. Gracias is thanks, so muchas gracias, many thanks. 
for uh, for being here today uh, and being un parte de mi clase español en vivo, en vivo, which means live, okay? All right, everybody. So on that note, I will say uh, nos vemos and hasta luego. And oh, before I leave, again, so take some time. Uh, obviously, at the end of this, please go back and put in the comments of the video those three uh uh, let's call it uh, homeworks that I gave all of you. And also any um, any suggestions that you have, why don't you just pop up an email to info at movingtomexi.co, uh, send it to Jillian, she'll forward it on to me. And any members who are taco and higher, so that's our mid-level to our highest level, if you want to partake in the class live, I will um, accept the first two people in, who email who are a taco or tacote member. And if you want to partake in this class live, I'll send you an invite for next week and we can have you on the screen here. And I can use you a little bit more as part of uh, a, a vocal back and forth, like being in the classroom. And we can, we can switch it up. So if two people do next week, then I will open it up to two new people the following week. And if we go through all of our higher level members, then we'll open it up to uh, all the members after that. Okay, uh, on that note, muchas gracias uh, a todo. Many thanks to everybody and nos vemos hasta luego and adios.